This episode of How I Built It is brought to you by two great sponsors. The first is our season-long sponsor. Liquid Web has been best known as a managed hosting company with tons of options. It's also designed a managed WordPress offering that is perfect for mission-critical sites. If you're looking for improved performance, maximized uptimes, and incredible support, Liquid Web is the partner you've been looking for. Every Liquid Web managed WordPress customer has iTheme Sync integrated into their managed portal, allowing them to update several sites with a single touch. Liquid Web hosts all of my critical websites and I couldn't be happier with them. If you sign up today, using the discount code HOWIBUILTIT33, you get 33% off for the next six months. Visit buildpodcast.net slash liquid to get started. That's buildpodcast.net slash liquid. If you like building things on the internet, especially e-commerce things, check out the Open Jobs with Prosperous. They are a small but friendly bunch that loves building software for entrepreneurs. They're the company behind WooCommerce subscriptions, a plugin with thousands of users. But that's just the beginning. Prosperous has some new products in the works and they're looking for talented folks to help them. If you dream of working in your pajamas, sipping macchiatos at your favorite cafe, or while soaking up the sun in Costa Rica, you can make it happen. Prosperous is a distributed company with employees all over the world. They offer some neat benefits like stock options, hardware allowance, and professional development. But the best benefit is the autonomy to do your best work however you work best. If this sounds like your kind of gig, Check out their open positions at buildpodcast.net slash prosperous. That's buildpodcast.net slash P-R-O-S-P-R-E-S-S. Today, my guest is Jeff Large, and we talk about one of my favorite topics, podcasting. Jeff is a professional podcaster. He does it for other brands, so he doesn't just have his own. He uh, is hired to help people set up podcasts. Uh, whether it be to promote their brand or uh, gain sponsors, which he has some pretty strong opinions about. Uh, so uh, we, we talk a bit about things that you could do with your podcast uh, that don't necessarily make direct sponsor money. Uh, and we talk about a whole, we like geek out about hardware and stuff like that too. So a uh, really, really fun episode. I love geeking out about podcasting and Jeff is certainly the guy to do it with. So uh, I know you will love this episode. And without further ado, on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of How I Built It, the podcast that asks, how did you build that? Today, my guest is Jeff Large from Come Alive Creative. Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm well. You have that intro very polished. I was I was impressed. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's uh, I think this is like the 50th episode I'm recording, so I've had a lot of time to to hash it out yeah you got the radio Um, voice going (laughs) thank you very much i'm also really good at talking like i was in drama club and stuff so just you know comes a little naturally to me nice but so today we're going to talk about come alive creative we were talking about that a little bit uh pre-show in our pre-show discussion so i'm really excited to pick your brain a little bit and why don't we start off with uh who you are and what you do and how you came up with the idea the idea of come alive in particular yes all right i'm jeff large uh like you just introduced me and I run an agency. We focus specifically on podcast strategy and production. So we're looking at it from a sense of actually producing really solid shows, original shows and episode series for brands. It just happens to be a really great way to reach and connect with your audience like you probably already know uh, doing your cast. And that's where we've settled down. What was the other part of the question? Who you are, what you do, and how you came up with the idea. Got it. The whole, okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's the essence of what I do. For me in particular, just a guy. <laughs> guy with <laughs> guy with a dream. Uh, no, a family man, uh, married, have two kids. I used to be a teacher. I left that to start what was a web dev and graphic design agency. And that was about four years ago. And it's molded now and sort of changed itself over into the, the podcast thing that we're talking about today. Nice. Yeah. So uh, actually, that was something really interesting that came out of the pre-show that I would love to kind of parse out a little bit, which is you started as kind of a general freelancer and then decided to niche or niche down to uh, this kind of podcast strategy for brands. Mm -hmm. What was it like? Like, how did you make that decision? Right. Because it's always really scary for a freelancer to be like, I'm going to exclude a lot of people from my business and focus in on just this. Yeah. 
Jeez. It's such, it's such an interesting topic to it's very counterintuitive to want to niche down. Where I started to give a little more context is I was a teacher. My whole background is, is literature. And so it's reading, writing, uh, that type of thing. I taught middle school for a long time. And then I taught K-8 technology for a while after that. And it was around my seventh or eighth year, getting career, have a career salary, benefits, all that stuff, that there's several influencing factors. But basically, my wife and I decided like it's it's time to make the jump. And we talked about this in pre-show. This is always one of those fun things where people think like my work was outpacing uh, my actual day job. And at the time I was doing development work, working primarily on WordPress. And I had two graphic designers that worked with me and we were all kind of unofficial, but we were doing these different jobs on the side. And at the time that I left, we only had one client and it was like this sort of ongoing month to month thing. It wasn't an actual like retainer, but I was getting like 35 an hour and we had about enough money in the bank to last us roughly six months. And we took sort of a stoic philosophy on the whole thing. We're like, what is the worst case scenario that could happen? Mm -hmm. And it's that we run out of money and I go back to teaching. And so we're like, all right, let's go for it. And we started off very broad, like you said. We started off, we just it was me and the two graphic designers. And so we did web dev and graphic design. Over time, over those past years, like kind of the flow went from broad and then I realized broad was bad. And so I niched down into e-commerce and did e-commerce for about a year and a half, really focusing on just helping people with either selling physical products or digital products. Um, Our team got expanded from then. Like even now, the team that we're running is probably... Probably about everybody's freelance on the team, but they've been very dedicated. I think the person that's been with us the least amount of time is maybe like three or four years. And so we got about five or six people that are kind of core and then some other specialists and things that we'll tap into outside of that. After e and, and the growth in that sense, we started to round back out to just general like marketing and dev because I personally like the marketing side a little more than doing the dev. There's just too many of you people out there that are way better than me personally. And if my team would get hung up on other projects, we just would have a threshold of what we could take on. And so to kind of get back to that original question, we finally got to a point where through I have a, a few business coaches that I, I work with and just kind of my own thinking about it and praying about it and analytics and that type of thing that we thought, well, let's let's go all in at this point on podcasting. And so we gutted about two thirds of our services in terms of getting rid of the web and some of the other stuff we were doing, the dev work. And right now we're still in the process. That was a few months ago now. Still in the process. We have some clients that we've kept on just because we have ongoing maintenance contracts and that type of thing. But for the most part, we're not marketing web dev anymore. I'm not really accepting any web dev unless it's like a really special case or I know you personally or something. But for the most part, it's we killed killed a whole ton of the business in order to focus on one area. Man, that's that's wild. So you decided to go into podcasting and, and podcasts essentially for brands. What kind of research uh, – you, you mentioned that you talked to business coaches and a couple of people. But what kind of research did you do to, to be like, hey, this is a good idea. Like this is a viable business option. Yeah. No, this is this is the fun stuff because yeah. if you look at um, – I have this a little more detailed on my about page on my website. But if have you ever taken the um, Strength Finders test? Are you familiar with it? I feel like I did this very recently. I might have. It's just it's the, it's it, yeah. the Strength Finders 2.0. Um, there's a couple different versions of it, but it basically it's similar to like a Myers Briggs or anything else, mm-hmm. and it gives you a few of your few strengths. And one of mine, what I end up being, what I end up rounding out to is, I think it plays into the fact that I was a teacher too. Is that I love learning and I love teaching, and so I'm usually collecting information from all over the place. And the the first time that I even realized that this would work is actually in 2012 ish there was a few years that i was co-running a board game publishing company uh with some friends of mine with my wife and actually my cousin and we we had dreams of being able to publish our own board game i mean you can the unfortunately the audience can't but you can see all the board games behind me <laughs> i was just gonna say i i was gonna ask you specifically about that so i'm glad you brought it up <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have about like a hundred and something games or whatever that we we're big board game fanatics and we wanted to make our own it's kind of like publishing a book. You find a designer, you as the publisher go through 
fix the game up, get, take it out to distribution and everything. The main way that we marketed, though, um, we wanted to give back to the board game community before we ever asked for anything because we planned on using Kickstarter and some different things. And so we started a podcast, and the podcast was all about the business of board games. And that's if you wanted to look that up, it's just the Happy Mitten podcast. I think our last episode was last year in October. And we really looked at every single facet of what is necessary to make a board game possible. The designers, graphic designers, illustrators, publishers, manufacturers, all of that stuff. And we we just thought we were giving back to the community at the beginning. But what we figured out was a ton, a ton of stuff. Because on one hand, we were learning everything, everything that we needed to know as a business. Uh, on the other hand, we're able to, because by the, the fact that I have a podcast, I'm able to talk to people that normally would never want to talk to me. It's all of a sudden this excuse like, oh, you got a podcast? Sweet. I'll, I'm sure I'll have an interview with you. <laughs> like, I mean, we're getting sort of like, I'm sure like thousands of dollars of legal advice in some of our episodes and all sorts of just crazy stuff. And beyond that, the community, it resonated with the community. Like we, we hit something, we hit a vein that people cared about. And by the time it was said and done, I mean, the numbers aren't a ginormous compared to like some of these business podcasts and stuff you listen to. But for three of us seriously just discussing board games and business, we, we ended with I think 89 episodes. And even right now we still have a listenership, but we've broke over a hundred thousand listens and all, nice. all sort of downloads and that type of thing. And it was in that, that we realized like through some of those experiences, like this is legit, like doing podcasts is a real thing. And I had a background in audio before that anyways. And so I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. And we started playing around with, as Come Alive came about, working on a podcast for Come Alive, started to offer it as a service for a few of our existing clients and some new clients. And just kind of through those experiences, and then I began to research actually more like what are other people saying about it, started to read articles, that type of thing, more more on the higher level stuff of like how to use this or what are creative ways to use this. Because... On one hand, you have the production of it, and I think I think you can get away with decent production. It's something that's a little more easy to acquire, but to really understand, taking taking my different strengths of caring about things like literature and writing a good story, creating a good narrative, and mixing that with good marketing practices, and then being able to create something that resonates with an audience for a brand and represents them well, like that's kind of how we came to it. So, I mean, that's sort of a, a long answer, but... No, but I mean, that's great. So uh, first of all, it's very cool that you uh, had a podcast about like creating board games, because I feel like I feel like a lot of people I know, or maybe just me, maybe I'm projecting onto other people I know, but I would love to make a board game and have no idea where to start. Like I had an idea for like a colloquialisms game, like almost like Cards Against Humanity, but yeah. That's neither here nor there. So I love this. Uh, so you, you've mentioned that you you have like business coaches and business advice, but I I really want to get into the the meat and potatoes of of the show, right? Like, so I usually ask, how did you build that? And with the with the business, it's one thing. So maybe what you could do is take us through like what you do for a client, and then the other part of it, uh, which I'm I'm assuming you knew was coming, was talk about the equipment that you use, right? You gave me a rundown before the show. So just talk a little bit about like, uh, you have a decent, having a decent setup is fine. What's a really good setup look like, things like that. So to recap that long and rambling question, when you have a client, how do you build out a solution for them? Mm -hmm. Right. And then what's, what's like a good podcast setup look like? Got it. Okay. I don't want to answer in a salesy way, so I'm going to try yeah. to just give a, a like a more authentic answer. I don't want this to sound like a pitch <laughs> to your people. Yeah. So like, let's totally, say yeah. if I'm just let's pretend I'm going to pretend you're the client. So if you sure. you came to me and it was before you made your podcast or whatever, there's a few different ways to look at it. One of the most popular that people will see are just editing options, editing options with usually transcription, that type of thing. That's an area that I don't dabble in. There's a lot of people that are able to do that, and you can actually get it done pretty cost effectively. It's it's not something that we thought about it at first of including that as one of our services. But if all you need is editing, we're not the agency for you. Like you don't want to work with us. We'd send you to somebody else that we trust that does a good job and is more affordable. What we're really trying to focus on is basically like some of the the positioning lines we'll use is like put a, mo a voice behind your, your marketing. Mm -hmm. And so there's so many different ways to talk to your audience. And I think part of maybe my personal 
uh, one of my really big personal convictions is people just don't like ads anymore. Traditional ads just aren't working, in my opinion. It's just ridiculous. We were listening to the radio the other day, and, and at least 14 times within an hour of listening to the radio on our car ride, they're talking about how this is ad-free. Let me tell you so much about how <laughs> ad-free I am. Or you look at other avenues where it's like these news sites are just dying to, to be able to put as many ads as they can. And you get the next button where it's just like, can I read the article, please, without 14 right. different pop-ups and like ad blocker users, the numbers on that and all this stuff. And so it just it makes you step back and think, OK, how instead of forcing my opinions on somebody or trying to slap them with these banner ads and all this other unnecessary stuff is how can I just become part of the conversation? Like, how can I, how can I enter into something that's a little more real and authentic or, and then even it's just, how do, how do I get there? And for some reason, the story came to mind when I used to teach one of my favorite teaching methods. This is, I hope this doesn't sound like dishonest or something, but, but, but <laughs> one of my favorite teaching methods was to trick my kids and so there was one lesson that I was notorious for was uh, I, I was the teacher that had a flip phone for years. Like at this point, uh, smartphones were super cool and, and right. all the all the hip kids were having them. And I just had my old like all tell flip phone still. <laughs> and I had one lesson in particular where the kids walked in and I looked real distressed. And this is middle school. And so I was able to get away with it. And then I'm like, OK, guys, I had this thing planned, but I need a new phone and I want to do some research can we please, can you help me? Like, you guys know this way better than I do. Will you help me pick out a phone? And they're like looking at each other and <laughs> they don't know what to think. And the whole lesson was about like positioning and how to write to a specific target market. And so we started looking at all these ads and I'm like, who the heck is this phone for? And we looked at like the iPhone and then we looked at like the Cricket and we looked at all these different phones and they're telling me exactly what I want them to know and what I want them to get. And they're like, writing different things for me. They had no idea that they were yeah. learning all these actual legit objectives. They were just like, what is going on? Yeah. In a certain way, if you do a podcast well, it's like that for the audience because you can take whatever your message is, whatever it is you're trying to convey, and you can make the, what you would have to pay, I don't even know, thousands of dollars for, for a radio ad or a TV ad or even like a podcast. I, I don't even like ads on podcasts. Like there's just smarter ways to do it. And so you can be part of the conversation. You can convey that message. You can really, whether, whatever your goal is, you, it, it, this is different based on your goals. If you're trying to be more authority building, if you just straight need a way to make extra revenue, if you're trying to create a certain aura around your brand, whatever it is, that's the essence of what we're looking at. And so if you want that as a brand, like then yes, talk to us. In terms of the specific services, it's anything from full production. Like we'll we'll walk you through step by step, uh, defining your goals. I've written about it in a lot of different places. I can give you some links to include in the yeah. the notes. But the the basics of it is defining the goals of the show, and that's going to dictate everything. Kind of a nutshell: you have three different main types of shows. You can have monologues, where it's just a single person talking about whatever it is that topic happens to be. You can have interviews, which are probably one of the most popular ones like we're doing right now you interview other people in that space that you want to be associated with or you can have sort of like npr story style that's we're looking at things like serial or startup and where you have much more of a narrative um, and so it just depends on your goals and that type of thing of how you define what the show is and then it's a matter of going through uh, finding the content it'll be different based on which type of show that you want producing editing publishing and, and getting it out there. I mean, that's sort of the, the nutshell. So we'll do like a full, very closely working with you. If you just want to play around in it, we have sort of prepackaged seasons that focus more around the interview style. Maybe we're just selling off, like I can parcel it out pretty solid of you're going to get five hours of audio. So you'll either get five one hour episodes or, thir or 10 30 minute episodes. And we just make you a season. We'll do whatever we'll host it we'll do all the stuff you don't have to worry about it at all no hands-on for you and then we just give it to you and you distribute it how you want and then the last thing that we can offer is uh, the aspect of actual consulting and so we have a few companies that have come to us and they're basically like we, we want to be able to do this and so on one hand i could tell them no 
but they're just going to go somewhere else anyways and figure it out. And so we've actually built it into a service that we're walking through and, and teaching them exactly what we do through tutorials and through actual one-on-one -on -one time. And those are more like retainer based a yeah. couple months at a time. So, I mean, that's, that's the essence of what we do and the options I would give you. Gotcha. Now, before we get to the second half of that question, I have a couple of follow-ups, right? Because this podcast is obviously sponsored. I would put them in right here, but I'm not sure. We're recording this before I have them set. <laughs> and and that's the the main way that this podcast makes money for me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I I started it as kind of a way to associate with my online courses, and it, it just kind of took on a life of its own, right? So like if I were to go back and do like a podcast for my brand, I would probably create a new one for WP in one month mm -hmm. that has no ads, that just, just is kind of value-added stuff. But what you're talking about is value adds for a podcast that doesn't have like a direct dollar amount associated with it, right? Like I can tell you my podcast made X amount of dollars in 2016. Mm -hmm. But what you're talking about is, is content that is, that provides some sort of educational value for a business, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess, let me clarify. There's, if you go, to, if you go to our site, I have one article that I recently wrote on ROI and how to determine ROI. And I'm sure there's more, I'm, Constantly, there's a couple podcast groups I'm a part of, and I was picking their brains. And I was sort of looking at the stuff I'm doing. And there's several different, let me see, nine, nine at the moment. Because anytime you put numbers in your blog titles, it's always going to get <laughs> better, better <laughs> SEO. So right now, like these are the ways that I would determine or could determine if a podcast was successful. One would be the number of listeners or downloads. So looking at your reach, your impressions. It could be sponsorship or ad revenue, like you're talking about. It might be podcast reviews, a way to, to try to solidify if it's working or not, if you're getting a bunch of solid reviews in iTunes. Other than that, you need to look at other things like traffic and conversions. So how are those specific pages performing? How many people are there? Are they clicking through on the stuff that are on those particular pages? That kind of thing, how much engagement you're getting there. Um, it could be email signups, open rates. So if you're sending out newsletters to your list of, hey, this new episode's up, and you those happen to have way more click-throughs than the other ones, you can see that they are interested in that. Or it could be specific opt-ins that you're putting on the podcast post pages. Uh, maybe you have something relevant that you're giving away, uh, whatever it is. Like, I have some stuff I could give you th that we could share with your audience or whatever, and it could just be like, hey, if you opt in, Jeff has this free gift for you type of a thing. Mm -hmm. It could be networking and referrals, just the people that you're able to associate with and, and talk to and kind of move up the ladder in that way, build your, your network. I think beyond networking, it could be true relationships. Like uh, we have a really solid, we're, we're building a small community in South Africa right now. And it all started with one of the guys that is, he was one of my business mentors, found us through the board game podcast. And he, it's Rich Mulholland. He's a really solid, he's, he's got about a 20-year-old, it's his company's missing link, and he speaks a lot around the world. He's definitely a force to be reckoned with in South Africa, um, and he just he's continuing to grow in that sense, and kind of, uh, he works with a lot of the higher-end businesses, helping, helping people basically not suck at public speaking. <laughs> and so through that, make, making legitimate, like my wife and I purposely drove down to Chicago uh, about two years ago to hang out with him for the day because he was in the States. And it started off as just a conversation over social. And we have a genuine friendship where we check in every month and that type of thing. And then he opened me up to a lot of other people in his network. And then the last two would be like re being able to repurpose content. Podcasting is amazing for being able to take a specific piece of content and reuse it multiple times and really sort of stretch your marketing dollar in that sense. Or like the other thing you commented on in terms of just straight learning, like you're making education for not only yourself, but your audience, like more importantly, your audience. So those are the ways that I would walk through with a business if is if it's working or not. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be I put in a dollar, I got back two dollars. Like there could right. be things. There's things that the podcast we've created that have been priceless compared to any sort of I got a two dollar return on this thing. So Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean and again, I can say the same thing about this podcast, right? I was very active in the WordPress community anyway. That's how I got my first few guests, but uh, I feel like the podcast has taken me to a kind of different level of involvement and connections. And, and I'm like you said, I'm talking to people who I would not have otherwise spoken to because of the podcast. So yeah. 
there's a lot of value in it. You know, even if even on uh, episodes that didn't get any sponsors, those still provided a ton of value because especially because I'm asking people how they build their business and that's valuable just to me. Like I can just take that information. It could be a private call and I can apply that stuff to my business. So, Mm -hmm. absolutely. um, so we, we've talked a lot about your business and kind of how it evolved. Uh, so maybe we can talk about, uh, what your plans for the future are. And then as a follow up, if somebody wants to get into podcasting today, like what's kind of the, the main advice you have for them? Cool. Okay. Did you, the short answer, so I don't miss the one, you asked also about the equipment. The easiest thing oh, yeah. to do, just go to the show notes. There's a lot of different ways to approach it um, that can be as simple as possible. If you want to get started, it's really easy to record audio. Like you can start honestly with just your phone and mm-hmm. record it that way and then pull it onto your computer. But the easiest thing for you to do, I would just check out equipmentforpodcasting.com because I have a lot of people ask me that, like, what equipment should I buy to get started? And I got sick of answering it. So that's just the website that I send everybody to. And I have like a a nine course email thing that you can get and it'll just tell you exactly what I do. The nutshell is I land in the camp of hardware. I would rather have my hardware take care of all my pre-production, which is before the audio hits the actual program and editing and things. I'd rather clean up as much in the front end to save me time in post-production, which would be editing it after the fact. And I definitely argue for, a lot of people record straight to their computers. I would argue for a digital recorder. You're going to get more reliable in terms of, I've never, I've, I've had friends that record like into GarageBand or Audacity or whatever, and then all of a sudden the, the computer flakes out and the episode's gone, or it's just like, could you imagine interviewing your hero and then all of a sudden the interview's just dead after the fact, or like there's a <laughs> terrible electronic hum because you're, there was a bad ground on your computer yeah. or whatever, so I always record straight into a, a digital recorder doing different things like mix minus and there's more there's more technical things but you just have it all your sd card's are never going to die like i've had mine for several years now and you might yeah. need to buy a new one later but you're never going to have a corrupt file doing it that way and then i just right. take the file over and, and bring it in and start editing so that's that's kind of my philosophy not everybody agrees there's a lot of people that say just record straight on the computer and make it simple and all this stuff but it's a balance between quality and a good story and that so i i don't mind putting in a little bit of money up front to make sure that my hardware handles what i need it to do nice so. very nice cool so uh that is great advice in kind of the bonus part of this episode which is going to be available to patreon subscribers uh, i'm going to ask jeff about uh what the minimum quality for a podcast is so that's a little teaser Ooh. but right now <laughs> let's get yeah let's get that's a good one i think but now uh let's get to the kind of crux the end of the main interview uh so what are your plans for the future so let's start there what are your plans for the future plans for the future i spend a lot of time planning and planning only goes so far um i look <laughs> at even stuff i got a podcast that will probably be live by the time your episode goes live uh, that started off as one thing literally sat on the completely finished ready to publish episodes for like over a year and I'm getting around to it now I've already repositioned it and all this stuff and it's because I had these plans but other things took priority and and anybody that works on a business knows like there's just a lot to do and you can only go so far so I think the immediate stuff that comes to mind is to just move faster than I'm comfortable doing Um, I tend to be a planner and so I'm actually trying to be the antithesis of that but the big thing is like right now it's working right now all our our foundation is laid and it's growing well and so i just want to be able to pr- team up with i want to team up with businesses that get it like there's a lot of really great businesses out there and brands out there that understand the power of digital and understand the power of tech and also still get that there needs to be a human connection and for mm-hmm. me podcasting is that like it's a way to bridge the gap between the two and so as long as I get to and my team gets to build more podcasts and create more good audio with fun people, like at the end of the day, I'm happy. Uh, that That's what it's going to come down to. That's awesome. And then the, the follow-up question to that was uh, if somebody wanted to get into podcasting today, what would you recommend for them? Well, it's like the one piece of advice that you would give them. Is that is that the, the pre-questions you gave me? Was that the last one? 
the, uh, the, the last one is, do you have any trade secrets? Okay, so if trade... there is, if this can be combined with the trade secret, then that's even better. Yeah, let's let's combine them. Okay. I, I was chatting a lot on the other things. Yeah. I always get uncomfortable <laughs> with how much I have to talk. Um, <laughs> it makes no. my job a lot easier, so I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, my we'll we'll expend on my uh, social uncomfort. Um, <laughs> no, I was gonna say I'll I'll roll them together. Uh, the okay. advice: if anybody tells you that podcasting is easy, I think they're a liar. Recording audio is easy, but creating a podcast that's worth listening to is not. Um, it takes a lot of work. You can listen to any of the creators of really solid podcasts. I just heard. His name is blanking me, so I, I apologize. But the the host of Lore, um, if you're familiar, Aaron Mankey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got solid stuff, and and yes. he was talking about this just on social the other day about how hard it is to write solid episodes. And to, I mean, you're essentially creating sitcoms or stories or books on a regular basis if you're doing it well. So be leery of anybody that says it's easy. Beyond that, the other piece that I get frustrated with is there's a lot of people out there that just don't know what they're talking about. And I don't want to come off Ivy Tower or anything, but to have, we've got 15 years of experience in audio and then another like four or five with podcasting. There's really good advice out there and there's not really good advice out there as well. And it's kind of hard when you're starting to to filter through that. So I'll just honestly say, if you have any questions, please reach out. You can reach out to me at jeff at comealivecreative.com. I've written a lot for, we've contributed to like OS trainings. We've contributed to GoDaddy. We have our own sites. There's a lot of content on my personal site. There's more strategic stuff on the Come Alive site. But the the biggest thing is like, there's a ton of stuff you can research and ways to do it well. But I would just recommend go for it. Just get started with something. Figure out whatever it is you need to do to take that first step. And then once you take that first step, just go, what's my next step? And if it's something you're serious about, then then go for it. Like there's no reason not to. And, and as you go and as you ship and as you do these different things, like you're going to learn what the next thing is that you need. So I just say... Research what you can, but for the most part, just always be asking, what is the next best step I can take and go for it? What fantastic advice to end this episode on. Uh, If you are enjoying it, though, um, we have a part two, a bonus over at patreon.com slash how I built it. So you can continue the conversation over there. Jeff offers a lot of really great advice. You might tell that I had some technical difficulties with my mic during the interview compared to the way I'm talking now. So I'm definitely going to have to take some of that advice moving forward. I want to thank our sponsors, uh, Liquid Web, who has been a season long sponsor. The show would not have been able to happen really, frankly, without them. So definitely check out the offer that they have for uh, listeners over at buildpodcast.net slash liquid. And thank you to Prosperous, uh, who has been uh, a sponsor for a while as well. Uh, They have job openings, so you should go work for Prosperous at buildpodcast.net slash prosperous. So uh, thanks again so much. And until next time, get out there and build something.